Hey guys, it's Nicole here, back on this Saturday evening. I hope you guys are all doing good out there, and welcome back to Nicole's View. So, there was a story I wanted to speak on coming out of Detroit, Michigan. I'm sure most of you have heard about it by now. A boy by the name of Brennan Walker, 14 years old, he overslept and missed his school bus. So... Apparently, he was trying to walk to a school called Roch Rochester High, and in the middle of doing that, he had to end up stopping. He stopped at the devil's home, and boy, was that a mistake. The wife saw this boy knocking at her door, so she automatically assumed, I see a black boy or according to her, a black man trying to break into our home, excuse me, trying to break into their home, okay? So she's yelling and screaming, being delusional, insane, racist, and I say that because of a statement she made and where she said, why did these people choose my home? The boy's mother overheard that on, I believe, a 911 call or her speaking to 911 or whatever. And here comes the rabbit, gun freak loving husband coming down the stairs and he just starts shooting at this boy who is just basically trying to find help. All right. And they're dumbasses. They have home security. So they were able to see exactly what happened. All right. And I'm more than positive. I'm more than positive. That both of them are probably rabid races. They probably sit up and watch Fox Clan all day. And, you know, they love living under this system where they can get away with stuff. I'm sure the racist husband is already concocting uh, a lie to get out of it. But you know what? The police have already seen the video. So there's no getting out of it. And I'm glad. I'm so glad. Because this could have went so tragically wrong. This was basically another Trayvon Martin in the making. Another Trayvon Martin. And that's not to say that nothing like this has happened since Trayvon Martin. Because it has. Okay? And I want to know, why wasn't the wife brought up on something? False accusations. False allegations. Because unless you saw this young man... Breaking down your door, breaking in your windows, pounding on your door, doing something of the nature to show that she was in the process of being robbed. That's one thing. But if he just came to your door, knocked on the, your door, and the first thing you yell out is he's trying to break in because you saw he was a black boy. In her eyes, he's a black boogeyman. That's, that's, that's what she saw. She didn't see an innocent black young man. Or I, I still call him boy because they like to say man to take away the child when it comes to our children. Our children have to immediately grow up in a racist society that feels it's okay to treat our kids like this. They think it's okay. It's not okay. And every day we fight against it. But... Um, I'm not sure if this is true or not. Um, I had heard on a video that um, the mother had took away the boy's cell phone. I don't know, maybe if he was in trouble and he couldn't have it. And if that happens, if you have to take away your kids, like a cell phone, and they're teenagers, give them something else. I mean, in this day and age, they have all these fancy watches and, you know, Apple has the Apple Watch. Give them something that has some type of GPS capability, something where you can keep, oh, can't talk, keep track of your child to know that they're safe. Um, something where if this ha were to happen, they know they have some type of guidance. So we, we don't have to hear these type of stories. And I'm not trying to blame the mom at all. It is not her fault. We just have to be better prepared because a lot of folks feel we are at war. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I feel like I'm getting a cough again. I know. I just can't shake this crap. Anyway, a lot of folks feel we are at war, we are constantly attacked, and the moment they have the opportunity to do something to 
any of us, doesn't matter, toddler, baby, child, teenager, grown adult, old, elderly, they will do it. They will do it. It doesn't matter. So we just have to be very prepared. In this day and age, I know a lot of parents can't take their kids to school, can't pick them up. You know, especially if uh, if they're able to ride on the school bus, a lot of parents may choose that option. I've always said I want to have some type of position, position, job, whatever, uh, business is what I really want, where I can pick my child up from school, from school and drop him off, pick him up, drop him off, because these stories scare the living crap out of me. And I'm sure they scare you all too as well, as they should. But we just have to be prepared. If we don't have the luxury to take our children to and from school or be home with our children, we have to have some type of backup plan, a master plan, okay? Because this here is just insane. And I want to know why that lying ass wife wasn't charged with something. She should have been charged with something too. Because I feel like if you didn't see him actively trying to break in, well, some folks will say, well, you know, there has been criminals who pretended to be something else and, and they're not, and then they get in. I get that too. But at the same time, you can't come out, just come out your house, guns ablaze and shooting at people. That no. Or just making crap up until it happens. Okay? So, yeah, that's my two cents about this story and I'm glad that they ended up uh, arresting this Jeffrey is it Ziegler Ziegler whatever 53 years old a retired fire firefighter um, he was arraigned on Friday and he had charges on him that included assault with intent to murder so good 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 do it for him he deserves it and apparently, he's done this to someone else. He's been just pulling out his gun whenever. And he just, woo, that was his opportunity. He came down them stairs like he was about to go put out a fire, okay, to shoot this boy. That was his plan. And to lie and say he was trying to break in their house. Black parents of America, do not leave your kids in the wilderness without a backup plan. And like I said, once again, I am not blaming this mother. We just have to be on top of our game like crazy. And it shouldn't have to be this way, but we have to. Because we live in an evil world, in an evil country, who love getting off seeing our children murdered. And lying about it. And making up a story. Please have a plan B, C, and D. And my heart goes out to that boy because I'm sure he's shaken by this now. He's shaken to the core. Oh, trust me. This devil has taken a piece from him. And every day they do that to our children. Whether it's through threatening to shoot and kill them, uh, educational wise. Every day they're looking for ways to break down our children in the system and something has to be done about it. That demon wouldn't have done that to a white boy, a white 14-year-old boy looking for help. And we all know that. Case closed. Throw his ass in prison as far as I'm concerned. And keep him in there is what I mean. He's already there. Anyway, the next story I want to speak on is coming out of Philadelphia. If you haven't heard, um, two black men were sitting in a Starbucks, okay? Doing nothing, not being disruptive. Here we go again. We are slowly creeping back to uh, wannabe Jim Crow laws. Wannabe, um, some folks will say segregation in a way. Well, technically it is, but it's just without the signs. We are already segregated. All right. But they want to go back to some apartheid state. These two black men were doing nothing to nobody. They were waiting on, guess what, a white man. I read somewhere in some comments that it, it, they were meeting over real estate. I don't know if they were real estate um, agents or something like that, but I was reading some comments on Facebook, but I have to confirm all that. 
and they were looking I don't know if they were meeting with this man because they were looking to maybe rent or buy I don't know but either way they were in the Starbucks waiting on this man so this man comes in this white man by the name of Alan Yaffe he comes to meet these two black men and when he's there he sees police officers arresting these two black men and then you have customers in the Starbucks like wait a minute why are y'all arresting these two black men they've done nothing they're just sitting here Apparently, they didn't buy anything. So a barista, if that's how you say it, barista, 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 <laughs> um, took it upon herself to call the cops because they were just sitting there trespassing. The cops said they were trespassing. Now, if you've ever been in a Starbucks, you know that folks are on their laptop, they're on their phone, they're writing, they're reading, they're doing everything in the Starbucks. So what's the difference? What is the difference? Yeah, they may have bought something, but still and yet, sometimes I, I don't see folks doing anything. I've done interviews where, where I'll, we'll meet up at Starbucks, where I'll meet up with the family, and, and I don't buy anything, but we're doing interviews. So yeah, this is some BS. And there is currently a hashtag boycott Starbucks uh, thing going on on social media. Hashtag boycott Starbucks. And Starbucks needs to uh, get rid of whoever, call the cops on these two men, get rid of them, fire them, first of all. Because unless they were in there doing something, being disruptive, uh, trying to rob the place, uh, going crazy in the place, what was the point of calling the cops on these men? on these brothers what was the point there was no point you saw them sitting there you saw black skin black skin is such a threat these stories i just can't win but anyway yeah starbucks needs to make this right i don't go to starbucks like that i'm not some starbucks crackhead because you know that that's the running joke folks who are just caffeine addicted they just can't get enough of it i go i used to well not used to go well used to now uh but sometimes i go in starbucks but it was not one of those things where you see me in there every morning on the morning no 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 i i don't need it that bad so for me i'm boycotting until they say something about this and make it right with these two brothers make it right starbucks we may not be able to shut you down like h&m but we should definitely make you shake in your boots and see those stocks start to fall when we boycott. Make it right, Starbucks out of Philly at this location. Make it right. That's not right. And those cops need to go sit down somewhere and go worry about some real crime. That's the problem. Too busy watching us. That's the problem. Stop it. Watch something else. Go find something else better to do. This is what I'm talking about. So busy watching us. Everybody else is planting bombs and doing everything else. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, y'all, y'all don't even understand when I hear these stories. A lot of y'all do, because you're, you're you're just like me. You're melanated. You see this shit on a daily basis. So busy watching the black man. Unless that man is doing something, breaking laws, doing real crimes. Leave them alone. But we know you can't do that because we know we're at war. But anyway, that's all um, I had to say on those two topics. I saw them and I and I said I have to say something about this. So anyway, the last thing I wanted to speak on is um, I saw some of you, well, not some, but all of you, your comments on my Cosby retrial when I went up there this uh, yesterday. And I saw some of your comments, and a lot of you left great, great comments. I thank you guys so much. I'm so uh, honored that you guys think so much of me, that you love the fact that I went there. I'm going to go again. I'm going to go Monday. That I went there to seek out the truth. And that's what I want to do. We're tired of the propaganda. We're tired of the mainstream media. We're tired of the white supremacist mainstream media not telling the truth, brainwashing our people on a daily basis. This has been years and decades of it. So it's so nice that we have social media to correct the bull. And that's why I went. 
And something else I forgot to tell you guys. This is how I know the media is on some BS. I was actually sitting right next to a lady who worked for NBC News. All right, and I'm gonna tell you something. She had her notepad, I had my notepad. When Andrea Constant was on that stand uh, and the prosecution was, you know, you know, you know, putting out their case and she's testifying and all that, this woman was just, I mean, the whole time. This is four hours, nearly four hours. She's just, the, the timer in the courtroom, But when Mesero got up there, it's like this. Yeah. Yeah, I saw this. So this is why I do this. This is why if I have the opportunity, the chance to go places and to show you guys and to tell you guys this is what they're doing, this is what they're doing. And, and I, I don't even really have to tell you guys. You guys know that. You see it. But to see it in person, to see what they do, that just lets me know. That lets me know right there. All right. And she did eventually start writing some stuff. But I'm going to tell you, baby, when Mesro got up there, it was just like... Like, I guess the ink went out in her pen. Uh, she ran out of paper. I don't know. But suddenly, she's not writing as much as she was when Constan was on the sand. And they try to sit up here and act like they're being so not biased and impartial and, you know, just trying to get the truth. No, they're not. I'm telling you guys the truth. And I'm not. I didn't go to school to be a reporter. That's the sad part. And I have all my notes here. All of them here. And when I go back Monday, I'm going to fill it up even more. So, yeah, that was something I meant to speak on as well yesterday. And another thing, I saw some of you who left comments saying, well, you know, we don't need to be up there. Someone kept going on and on about Mesro. He doesn't want people up there because he doesn't want it to be a spectacle and I've heard Mesro talk about that and you know how certain he doesn't want the atmosphere to be charged in a certain way so he may ask folks to not do this like with Michael's Michael's trial initially he had the Nation of Islam uh, being security for him and you know they were wanting to make it seem like a black and white thing and it was racist, which it was still, even though I, I got what Tom Mesro was doing. He's like, he wanted to make it like Michael was from the community there and he wanted it to be a community thing. So they wanted to not make it into a racist um, thing, even though we know it was with the Nation of Islam and all that. Although the Nation of Islam is not racist. They can't be racist. They're calling out white supremacy, but, but okay, fine. We know what they do. And, um... Yeah, someone in my comment section kept going on and on about how we shouldn't be up there, how we shouldn't do this. You know, I'm going to suspect you to be an agent or a troll if you keep saying that. We can go there. I said, as long as you're not being disruptive, as long as you're not in there trying to pull a stunt like that dummy, uh, Nicole Rochelle. And, and, you know, if you're not doing anything like that, nobody's saying go up there with your... Your Black Panther fight the power. Yeah, yeah, let's take Whitey down. Nobody said for you to go up there and do all that. As a matter of fact, we need to be covert in something like this because you go in there like I did. You go in there, you take your notes, you're like, hmm, you observe. You see what they're talking about. You learn the court system. You know, I saw a lot of us out there, when I was out there, I saw a lot of black people just walking around and, you know, you know, and, and if they're not working, this is a great, a great opportunity to see your system in play look at it that way as well aside from the fact that of course this is about bill cosby you can go to any trial if there is public opening seating you can go and most times there is you can see your system at work you can see what they do on a daily basis it's something to see, and it's something to consider. You shouldn't want to run away from court. You should want to see what they're doing. See how they're treating our people. If they can do this to Bill Cosby, iconic uh, actor, producer, comedian, 
If they can do this to Bill Cosby, they can do this to you. They can do that to Bill Carter up the street, Bill Crawford that way. We know this. That's why I still talk about this because it's so important. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, middle class, blue collar. Because yes, there are black people who are blue collar, but they never want to in, uh, involve us in that or put us in that category. No matter what you are, they can do that. They can tear you down and keep a smile on their face and keep it moving. Because what's going on in that courtroom is an utter disgrace. This shouldn't even be going on. Are you, I'm just like, are you kidding me? So yes, I have some downtime and I'm definitely going to go out there as much as I can. I'd like to do like a Monday, Friday thing. Uh, I can't go every day because the gas, whew, it eats up a lot of gas and I'm not working. But thankfully, I have a little bit saved before I uh, quit my, my job, my past job, excuse me. Anyway, so that's why I'm doing it. And, and just to show moral support and like I said in my video prior, I told Andrew Wyatt, uh, Cosby's spokesman, let him know that we are out here. We are out here. We may not be at the courthouse, but we are out here. We see it for what it is. We see it. Because Cosby could be your grandfather, your uh, uncle, your brother, your dad. So yeah, it's still important. Just because he's a celebrity doesn't make it um, not important. Just because he may have money doesn't make it not important. Because it's just as important as a man who don't who has nothing. It's the same thing. It's just money. And that's what this is about. He's black and he's worth something. And another thing. I know some of you bring up well, the reason why you don't see a lot of black people out there is because Cosby, he started saying all this and that. Listen, I never said that Cosby was just 100% just right about every single thing that came out of his mouth. Nobody is. But we have to understand the mindset of someone like a Bill Cosby. They grew up in a totally different era. So their mindset is not going to be just like ours today. Because that's, that's, not just, that's just not how it is. And another thing, when Cosby was calling out black, some black folks, some black folks, he was talking about a particular sector of black people with this mentality. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. If that's not you, then he's not talking to you. You have nothing to worry about. And there are folks in our community who want to do nothing but raise hell, have no type of respect for themselves. I see it all the time. That's not to say we're all like that, but we do have a sector. We do. And to pretend like we don't is not being authentic. You're not being truthful. Now, yes, I get it. When he went on his rants at times, he did it in front of the wrong people. That I agree with. Other than that, the other stuff he said, it's true. It is true. So does, does that make me or anybody else out here who gets on here and talk about uh, the bad apples in our community, that makes me a coon? No. We have to know how to separate the truth from the lies. And we can do that. We can do that. Some of us are just being uh, just lazy when it comes to that. They want to lump everybody together like he was talking about all black people. And he wasn't. He wasn't. And that's the same talking points now they use against him. And y'all are running with those same talking points. How does that make you look? Yeah. Unfortunately, now... Some will say, well, this is his karma. Well, yeah. But does it make it right? No, it doesn't make it right. To sit up here and falsely accuse this man doesn't make it any uh, more okay. It doesn't. It's wrong. Wrong is wrong. So, yeah, I'm going to continue to support Cosby. Yes, some folks may not give a damn about him as, you know, in his profession, career, whatever. But I do. I appreciate some of the things he's done. 
I do. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm not ashamed to say that I am thankful that he was able to represent and show that a black family can be successful. That, you know, just work hard and do whatever you have to do. Now, we know that's not always easy to do. We know that. But the way he was able to do that, I still have major respect for him to go ahead and to uh, help create a different world and to show that we don't have to be uh, buffoons and idiots. We can be smart. We can go to college. We can do great things. And even if you don't go to college, you can still do great things. I'm not going to throw him completely under the bus because of some stuff I don't agree with with what he said. I'm just not going to do that. Unless it's something just so, it, it's just filled with vitriol and just like pure hate like what Stefan Clark was doing. Unless he was doing something like that, that's different. That's totally different. But if he's saying, you know, some of us, we need to get together. Let's do this. You need to do that. Some of us are out here buffooning, acting silly not being productive in their communities. I see nothing wrong with that because that's true. We do have people out there in our community who are useless, who don't want to do anything, who want to commit crimes. And then we're supposed to just, oh, just put it on the rug. Let's just, let's just, let's just brush it on the rug like it don't exist. No, because it does exist. And yes, I know crime and everything else happens in everybody else's community, but we're talking about us, all right? And the only bad thing in my eyes that Cosby did wrong was getting on these other platforms that are not black ran, not black owned, talking like this. That was his only mistake. Other than that, I see nothing wrong with what he did. Nothing wrong. All right, we, see, we get on here on social media every day and talk about stories where it may involve black people beating their kids to death. I, I, I'm, that's a story. Another story I want to talk about, but I feel like I'll be so angry I can't even get through it. A, uh, a mom, uh, I won't even call her a mom, but a damn hyena and her boyfriend. I don't even think he was the father. Another one of those stories, beating a boy, this little four-year-old boy to death because he spilled his cereal. Now, how do you justify that? Those are the stories that Cosby was talking about. But y'all want to act like this ain't happening out here. Y'all want to pretend like we don't have these women out here getting with these convicts who are not even the father, the biological father of these children, and then turning around, beating them to death, killing them. Just every horrible, unimaginable thing possible. That is what Cosby was talking about. But y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all want to say he was cooning. Y'all want to focus on, oh, well, he was, you know, just... Uh, uh, Y'all got to understand a different mindset, different generation. I even find myself at 34 years old talking about these, these kids growing up today. I find myself doing that. And I'm 34. I do it. And the older you get, we're going to all do it. So don't sit up here, sit on your high horse, and act like y'all don't do the same thing. Because y'all do. Especially the older you get. You're going to be just old man territory. Old woman territory. And that's where Cosby was in. But it, it still doesn't mean that he's not telling the truth when it comes to a lot of this. So, no. I ain't going to throw our elder under the bus. I don't have to agree with everything he said. But I'm not going to agree to them uh, creating this just disgusting witch hunt. This high-tech lynching they have going on. No. And y'all shouldn't be comfortable with that at all. Because it's Cosby today and your grandpa tomorrow. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to speak on. Ooh, I didn't mean to go this long. Damn, this video almost 30 minutes. I'm on fire today. And I don't know why. I don't know why. But I'm just, some of the things I see in here, I'm just like, wow, really? And to the smart ass who left the comment, what do you think Cosby's going to be uh, Shaquille O'Neal's height? No, you dummy. We all see folks that we've grown up and seen on TV and, you know, when we see them in person, if we happen to see them in person, it's just like, oh, well, I didn't think they'd look this way. Oh, I didn't think <coughs> they'd look that way. Excuse me, guys. Um, but yeah, I just thought, I just envisioned Cosby being a tad bit taller for some reason. And someone left that comment. Don't annoy me. Yeah, I'm not in the mood, as you can see. <laughs> Don't be a smart ass with those type of comments. Damn. But anyway, 
I just wanted to talk about that, get that off my chest. You guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Have a great rest of the weekend. I'll let you guys know. Oh, uh, once I make it there, I'm going to try to go again Monday to the Cosby trial. Anyway, take care. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.